And so today's session is really about unpacking some of those um, decisions. Uh, just for disclaimer purposes, um, today's presentation of slides are copyright um, protected um, and it's purely for um, informational purposes and does not constitute legal advice. Uh, myself, Lenoma Legal and Zoho Inventory do not accept any liability for any loss or any damage that may be occasioned as a result of the resilience by any person on the information contained in this presentation or slides. For purposes of today, I'm going to be focusing on these factors. Firstly, it's just um, introduction. Then secondly, I'll unpack the different types of online transactions. And thirdly, obligations um, as a party to each of these transactions that you're involved in, more so specifically as a business. Fourthly, what to look out for when you're vetting for a merchant. But um, this will also be helpful for those who are merchants, what to protect themselves from and what to ensure that they are compliant with so that when um, future users are trying to use their um, services or trying to make use of them as, as merchants, that at least um, they are covered. And lastly, I'll just slowly unpack the pros and cons of online transactions. Um, as indicated, this move is much needed um, for most areas. And I know in South Africa, the e-commerce um, economy has grown dramatically drastically during this time period purely because um, of the pandemic and we're going to deal with those assets. So the first type of transaction that you need to, which is probably most relevant to most uh, business owners uh, in relation to the B2B transactions. These are businesses that uh, conduct uh, transactions with each other. And this is mostly related to when you're navigating a relationship, when you're trying to enter into some form of partnership with another business. So this is falls under the B2B model. Those of, of you who are familiar with different types of business models, this will make sense. Um, and this will also be applicable to those uh, businesses that focus on you know, your B2B models, where you're trying to sell services to other businesses like us. Uh, even though we're a startup, we're a business, but our markets are small businesses. So transactions that take place um, under this uh, segment of or this type of online transaction is limited to one business to another. And so whatever relates to this specific requirements and vetting that needs to take place needs to be done in accordance with um, proper due diligence that needs to be performed. The second type of online transaction that can take place is what we call your B2C um, transaction. So those are for the businesses today that are sitting with us that actually transa transact with consumers directly. So if you're selling something that is directly for users uh, that is supposed to be um, used by consumers directly, these are, this is the category that you fall under. So this is really for, so for example, you know, businesses um, that sell, for example, like Ticketmaster in South Africa, we have CompuTicket, um, and there are other examples um, that we can make use of, where if you're selling directly to the end user, so those are the transactions, the type of transaction that can actually take place online. And thirdly, those are P2P um, type of online transactions. So these are transactions that usually take place between two individuals but are facilitated through some form of online platform. Um, I made an example here of eBay, but that can easily be any marketplace which connects different individuals who are trying to sell something. So if you're trying to uh, sell something in your own personal capacity, let's say you're trying to sell a car and you plug it into another um, platform so that you can get access to more users or people who need your specific car, the type of transaction that will take place is what we call P2P. And I just needed to put things into context. There are a lot of other types of transactions, just like in any um, type of business that can take place, but these are the most common ones that take place online. So it's really um, how you navigate that type of online transaction as a business between yourself and another business. Um, Secondly, between you and your consumers, 
and thirdly um, if you have built some form of platform that facilitates transactions between individuals then this webinar is quite relevant for you with all of this involved there come certain obligations that need to be kept in mind in terms of what needs to be done by each party so in terms of the first model for your b2b uh, there are certain obligations that need to take place. So if you're conducting a business um, transaction with another business, so for example, if you are purchasing uh, something or you're making use of a service provider from another business, or if you are transacting um, some form of huge amount, there's an obligation on each party, obviously, to perform in terms of their specific contract. So the first point of reference will be whatever contract that the parties have entered into that will be the first one and secondly the level of due diligence that needs to take place so have you done your research when you are engaging with the other business um have you checked on google have you checked the reviews have you checked on social media have you checked with the past um customers or users um and this, this type of online transaction and the type of obligation that exists under these circumstances specifically relates to other businesses. So we need to keep this in mind when dealing with um, the type of businesses and usually the amounts that are involved because these are B2B type of transactions, sometimes they're relatively very high because um, usually the type of transactions that take place are high. So if, like I said, for example, if you're purchasing huge merchandise, if let's say you are um, exporting um, some form of product, or if you are importing some form of product in order to sell um, in your country or in your jurisdiction, um, that, that relationship that you have with the other business, that type of transaction, um, the core function really and the obligation that exists will lie solely in the agreements that have been signed between the two. So this is why agreements, especially in this, these type of transactions, because they're normally associated with huge amounts that you really, really need to pay careful attention to the actual agreement and the obligations that are specifically stated in them and what is required of you. And some of these are also attached and linked to the payment in terms of how payment will take place. Is this a once-off purchase? Is this a long-term type of relationship that you have with the other business? Are payments going to be made monthly? If it's a software um, type of purchase, are there monthly payments involved in there? Are there setup costs involved? Is there any hardware um, elements to it. So those are key things to keep in mind. But as I said, the first point of reference under this type of transaction and the obligations that exist under these uh, circumstances really lies in the agreement. The second type of um, transaction that we dealt with previously and the obligations that relay between the parties are really about between the business and the consumer. So as a consumer, um, have you checked the reviews? Have you checked on Reddit? Have you said on social media? Have you checked um, what other users are saying about this person or this business that you're going to interact with online? Because more often than not, even though there are some provisions, for example, if you're using um, payment gateways or options such as PayPal, sometimes um, you know refunds are, are, are allowed or you can... Um, you know, uh, reverse certain things. But if it is like that, sometimes um, it becomes a slip, you know, it becomes too much admin in order to do that. So in order to actually prevent too much admin in terms of payments that has already been made online, sometimes it's better as a consumer to actually do some form of audit in terms of the business that you're going to be transacting with. And if you are a business owner, um, we're going to later deal with, um, you know, how to vet, you know, your merchants that you're going to navigate with, the services um, that you're going to employ with. But um, at this stage, the obligation that really relies between these two in terms of the relationship will lie normally 
um, if this is an online platform, the example that I made, you know, like in um, ticket um, purchases, you know, comp ticket and so forth, the terms and conditions are often in the website and platform itself. So it's about from the business side, ensuring that um, they are protected in terms of their terms and conditions and that the users that actually interact with their system and platform, that they understand what they're getting themselves into, not only in terms of payment, but also in terms of specific delivery that are attached to any payment that can be made. And this is quite important. You know, it includes critical things that need to be on every um, website, um, such as, you know, website disclaimers, privacy policies, your T's and C's. So those are critical things that a business should be looking into in terms of their platform and the ability to actually integrate certain payments to and gateways in order to receive payments from clients and users. And that is quite important because sometimes um, that will also dictate whether um, a user will make use of your platform or not. And it's quite important for any business for example, to have like um, a website a disclaimer, because oftentimes you might have a link, an external link um, to in, in, on your platform to another third party website. What that would mean is that you want to limit yourself and decrease your liability that can be attached um, with whatever the third party is doing. So having a, a website a disclaimer uh, can be quite important. Um, in using that. So those are the things that need to be kept in mind and the obligations that are involved by each party. So just a refresher from the business side is ensuring that your platform, um, the terms and conditions are in order, website at the same as in order, privacy poli policies, um, cookie policies, all of those things are in order. And from the consumer side, the obligation will really come from ensuring that uh, you've navigated and you're comfortable with the website and the terms and conditions, even though I know people don't read it, but it's actually quite um, important. And another area that uh, users and consumers can focus on is ensuring that um, they've done their own form of due diligence through checking of reviews, um, checking through social medias before they actually pay um, these merchants or businesses that they're interacting with online. And the third type of group of obligations that I wanted to deal with was in relation to the P2P transactions. So the person-to-person -person transactions. Um, if you're an individual, what you need to keep in mind is, if, especially if you're selling something that is physical, um, I made a, an example of a car previously. So what that would mean is that if you're selling, let's say, a car on um, a platform, whoever that you're going to sell the car to, it's really, you know, a safety issue. Not sure about other jurisdictions, but here in South Africa, um, it's, sometimes it can be quite um, dangerous. So it's really about ensuring that you meet in public areas, to keep safe, and from both sides, um, people that are interacting, it's to ensure that the one party ensures that whatever they're advertising is true and correct. And it's a reflection of, you know, the true state of whatever services or products that they're selling. And from the other party's um, state in terms of obligations, it really has to do about ensuring that they come to the party. That is, they ensure that they um, actually pay what they say and they're going to pay for in the manner within which both parties agree on. Um, and you will note the similar thread between all of these three types of obligations is that there's some form of agreement. Despite the fact that in the first category, because uh, those are B2B type of transactions, normally um, the type of um, relationship is codified, it's in a solid document, it's in a contract, um, and these other types of relationships, despite the fact that they're not necessarily in that form where someone physically has to sign or, um, you know, append their electronic signature to an, an, an agreement, just by virtue of a consumer interacting with a business online, um, they are actually, when they accept those terms and conditions, they are actually saying, that they're entering into that agreement with them. And the same can be said with the P2P 
uh, model. Um, those two parties that are entering on uh, a platform online in order to transact, they are actually entering into an agreement between themselves. Even though it's often not codified, but this is, I just thought it meant it's very important that I mentioned so that people keep that in mind that, um, you know, in terms of the law, uh, sometimes, yes, it may be hard to prove um, in a court of law, but just because something is not written down, it does not mean that it does not amount to an oral agreement. And the other aspect that I wanted to deal with under P2P in terms of obligations, despite the fact that the transactions take place between two individuals on a given platform, what people need to keep in mind, especially those of us who are in the online business, so if you are the business that is providing this particular marketplace, if you are giving the people um, this opportunity to actually interact online and navigate um, and transact online through your specific platform, it becomes quite important for your very own T's and C's to be in order. So what that means and what that looks like from your end is that you need to ensure that the terms and conditions are in order. Um, you know, the website, um, the same as in order. You need to ensure that um, your liability is limited because, you know, when people are interacting between themselves, they can somehow, you know, if something goes wrong between the two of them, they can come back and hold you accountable and responsible. So your T's and C's in terms of how they interact with the platform needs to be airtight in order to protect yourself from future legal um, suits. The second aspect that I wanted to deal with relates to what to look out for. So if you're a business and you have decided that you're going to interact with a merchant, that you're going to use a merchant online for some form of way in your business, if you're trying to expand your business online, if you're going to integrate um, some form of merchant or a payment gateway, these are some of the things that you need to look out for. First of all, um, you need to assess its ability um, to be integrated. So the question that you need to ask yourself is, how easily would it be to integrate some of your other platforms or the systems that you have already built into the merchant platform? So if you're going to use um, some form of um, platform, let's say um, one of um, Zoho's um, you know, applications, um, what you'd want to look for as a user or as a business is how easy is it for those, um, uh, you know, merchants to actually be integrated into your own system or into your own platform that you have developed. Um, this is really, you know, one of those where you look into the integration um, capabilities, you know, are they able to integrate into WordPress, into, the, you know, the typical things that you would be using um, to check whether that actually makes sense for you. The second aspect um, when you're vet vetting um, you know, merchants, you know, what to look out for, um, at some point you need to think long term. So, yes, it might make sense now, but is it in line with your long term business strategy? Um, oftentimes, so for example, if you are expanding territories, um, if you're using um, an online, um, let's say, um, accounting software, you know, let me make an example of that. If you're making a, a use of an online accounting software platform um, and you are in a specific location, if it is location bound, if it is accepting or populating accounting um, documents or invoices and estimates in, let's say, US dollars, but you also have a market in South Africa, um, how easy is it for the system to actually change? Is it, are you able to change it on your own so that it reflects whatever client that you're going to engage with? Or is it actually able to integrate itself or change according to the address that the user inputs into the system when they integrate with your platform? So those are some of the things that you need to keep in mind that it's not only just about now, but it's about long term, where you see your business and how that merchant actually interfaces with your business goals. And thirdly, another consideration is really about the cost. 
So this is about tapping into not only about um, you know the initial setup cost, what that looks like, but is there a sign up fee involved? Are there any monthly costs involved? Are there any renewal fees that you need to take into account? Any monthly renewals or um, annual subscriptions? Um, would you need, um, you know, data or Wi-Fi to actually get access to that particular system in order to conduct your business? Is there an offline um, option that is available for you to make it easier for you to navigate? And then later when you're online, you know, the system will just sync, um, you know, and upgrade itself and what that looks like. So this is quite important because that all goes into your costing as a business. And so you want things that actually make financial sense to you and to your business going forward. Fourthly, it's about also customizing, you know, in as much as, you know, it's important for you to actually have something, um, you know, freemiums, um, you know, normally they just give, you know, standardized type of um, options but do they at least allow for some form of customization because at the end of the day if you're running a business branding is quite important brand positioning and how you interact with your users with your clients is quite important so how easily is it for the platform that you're using or for the merchants and the service offerings that they are providing how easy is it for you to actually customize it you know in terms of your own branding or your business and that will greatly assist you um, as you run your business and you know for purposes of consistency so it's an important key factor to consider when vetting merchants and which ones work best for you and then the second uh, last uh, really consideration that you need to keep in mind when vetting a version is Finding a system that is easy, you know, um, easy for just about anyone to use. If you are a solo um, preneur, you're running your own business, okay, fine, great. If you're able to make use of it, amazing. But um, if you're running, you know, a biggish organization where you have a huge team, um, where you're also delegating certain functions, how easy is it for the system to actually be used by anyone? Um, if you're absent so that they can actually just uh, jump in where you left off so that actually things continue moving even if you are not in the business because oftentimes you know as business owners get so attached um, to the business you're working in the business and you actually lose perspective and actually removing yourself and delegating some of your functions can actually help in growing your business because your perspective changes and the only way that you can actually do this is through good people, but also through good systems. And so when looking into really decent merchants, you know, when you vet them, one of the things that you take, need to take into account is really how easy is the system that somebody else can use when you are delegating a specific function so that you can actually focus on other more strategic, um, you know, areas in your business that will allow you to grow. And lastly, really talk to customers, talk to other people, people that have been using um, whatever merchant that you're trying to, to use. Um, you know, what are they saying? What is their experience like? How easy, um, you know, is the system to use? You know, so all of these factors that we've previously gone to, um, another way just to validate whatever assumptions you may have about the process that you've undertaken as you vet your merchants, this can be validated also through, you know, checking previous customers. What are they saying? How are they feeling? And this is literally just as easy as checking up on the reviews, checking up on social media, just to ensure that whatever relationship that you're going to enter into with a merchant actually makes sense for you. And I say this because oftentimes um, we don't necessarily look into the legals and the agreements that we enter into with merchants, sometimes they can be quite difficult to get out of. So it's always better to ensure that before you actually enter into those types of um, relationships with merchants, that you've done your own form of due diligence and you've satisfied yourself 
So really, it sounds like a lot of work, but it's necessary work. Um, you know, there's a saying that prevention is better than cure. You know, so it's really looking at it from that lens when you interact and interface with merchants. So we've dealt literally with, um, you know, what online transactions are, your obligations, um, and the type of vetting that you'd need to look into for uh, merchants as you interact with them. But such, you know, life is full of the yin and the yang. Um, everything has its pros and cons. So this next section really unpacks the advantages and disadvantages of online transactions. I decided to I decided to start with the good stuff. So yes, um, doing your business online, integrating um, online merchants or some form of uh, merchants uh, online can be very good for you and your business because this means you know this can be an easy and best solution for your shoppers, especially if your market, you know your market segment is really tech savvy they can navigate being online they're comfortable with um, interacting with online payments um, so it really will just makes sense it's the busy and pro uh, the best and probably the easiest solution for you um, and for your shoppers you know your users people who are going to interact with you as a business oftentimes um, merchant systems they are effective um, they have great response times they're normally very easy to use. Um, most of them is literally as easy as filling in a form and the rest often is taken um, place by either the web or database services. And online banking um, is completely based um, on online transactions, the processing system, credit cards are also handled by them. Um, and you can literally access anything on the web and choose it's because of the financial transactions methods that are supported by these systems. So if you're choosing a certain type of merchant, um, are they able to actually integrate, let's say, um, payment from other countries? Um, you know, those type of considerations that you need to keep into account. But really, you know, these um, pros and advantages speak to ease of use and accessibility and because literally we're living in a very fast world people literally want things at the tip of their fingers um, it makes it quite easy for you when you're interfacing or if you choose to integrate some form of merchant online or use some form of application it'll help you as a business but also help you to satisfy you know the crave of you know getting things done quicker and faster but also from a business perspective, what that looks like for you is that the transaction rate is quite quick. It's quicker, it's much more effective, it's more simpler. Um, I'll make an example, for example, with us, you know, with our online um, document platform, unlike traditional lawyers, we have to wait for, you know, days, sometimes weeks on end for a contract with us, literally, you can just get a legal document within five minutes. So it's that simple, just by integrating an online um, merchant or platform somehow into your business drastically increases your ability to actually be accessible and probably even more affordable in some circumstances to your users and customers that you're trying to interface and interact with. Great, so we've dealt with the good stuff, but yes, there's always some bad stuff things uh, sometimes the system can be overloaded um, I mean I've experienced this before I don't know if you have you know if you're trying to um, go on to a certain website and for some reason you know it just freezes or there's an error code that shows it just shows that the system is overloaded so if that happens to you obviously as a business um, that is bad for you because that means you know no purchases are made um, and those type of transactions are affected and it also affects your reputation as a business. So those are some of the things that you need to keep into account when integrating some form of, a, you know, merchant um, application into your business when you're going online. But obviously that can be solved by just ensuring, um, you know, that the servers are upgrade um, and ensuring that the size itself also accommodates um, whatever users 
that you're going to try and bring into the system. Another important thing, um, because obviously these transactions and these processes are taking place online, there's this huge issue of data being stored and your your customers' user data and account information um, being stored. So there's that element um, of possibility of that information being hacked. And obviously this could lead to a lot of financial and personal problems for your users, but also um, for your own business in terms of what that means in your know, reputation and business-wise and possible lawsuits, because obviously you did not prevent uh, that. So, you know, those are some of the disadvantages that you need to look out for. Other times, um, one of the cons in relation to this really deals with uh, it may not be an issue in some areas, but in some areas, electricity is a thing. And if there's a shortage of electricity supply, you know, additional backup facilities like generators and hardware. So you need to keep that in mind, especially if, um, let's say, the type of system that you're using um, is not in the cloud. You know, it's not online. So if there's some form of hardware that needs to, to be uh, placed, so if you're a business and you are offering, so if you're a merchant and you're offering this type of service and you have some form of hardware, you know, there's an obligation on you to ensure that you're covered um, and that, you know, there's some form of generators so that even if electricity goes out, that, you know, the servers are protected and it's business as usual for people who are interfacing with your services. And... Online transactions, you know, the processing itself sometimes involves a lot of staff working on, you know, maintaining the type of inventory that you're using. So this is really directed to those businesses that are interfacing and interacting with physical products. Um, and that itself, you know, trying to interface and balance and work through that system, because as I mentioned, online transactions are rather quick. And the same cannot be said um, to, you know, human elements. So that itself can be um, a disadvantage because obviously the discrepancy between the two can really be a barrier in terms of, you know, your, your stock keeping, your stock taking, how are you managing that, um, selling something that you don't have, you know, that will delay the delivery process to whatever transactions that have been done online. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, as a business, um, if you're going to interface and interact with merchants and going to use one. So sometimes um, these systems don't have effective um, methods of really transferring products um, to the buyers themselves. And this is where, you know, an e-commerce uh, website comes in. So even if you have integrated some form of um, platform that you've built in order, you know, it looks nice and all, where people can actually go and see the products that you're selling as a business, but it does not have that feature, uh, that e-commerce feature that allows for some form of payment gateway. Uh, it might be quite problematic in terms of easing through delivering what you are selling. And lastly, really the fundamental um, operations of any online system can be automaticity. And that really ensures that if any step fails in the process of the transactions, the entire system fails. So it's one of those things to ensure that if one thing breaks, um, the other doesn't. So it's quite important that you keep that in mind when choosing any form of merchant or any form of payment gateway that you're trying to integrate into your business. And that will be it for now. 